God bless you, family. It's international evangelist Rafael Cuevas Jr., better known as Nuni. I want to thank you tonight for joining us on YouTube. That's right. Tonight, we're going to finally show you a sneak peek of Virtue, the gospel talk show, taped exclusively for TBN Salsa. But tonight, you get to see a sneak peek on our YouTube channel. I'm so excited because you all know it's been a year since we've been doing different live tapings collecting a season for TBN Salsa. And yep, we're just about finished. So before we launch our season on TBN Salsa, our team and I got together and decided to give you all a sneak peek preview of what's to come with Virtue, the gospel talk show. What's Virtue? Imagine Don Francisco, Steve Harvey, put together in a gospel version and you get me on a talk show. That's right. Virtue is a show taped in front of a live audience with a live band, live worship. And let me tell you, God has shown up and shown off in each and every episode that we have taped. And I know that tonight when you see our sneak peek, your life will be impacted because everyone that has shown up to our live taping walks in and walks out changed. So tonight we're going to show you an exclusive look on an interview that I had with a young man, a special young man, who changed all of our lives and our mindset to when it comes to worshiping because he proves that there's no limits to worship. So subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit that notification button, hit like on this video, share it, and get ready to see Virtue, the gospel talk show, coming soon on TBN Salsa. So without any further ado, this is virtue. Hey Cancer, in 2008 you said I was going to die and now I got my own television talk show. Don't believe me? Watch! Carlos, thank you for coming to our show. Thank you for having me. Man, let me tell you something, Carlos. Um, as, as many people know, I was, I was I diagnosed with bone cancer 10 years ago. And bone cancer deteriorated my left femur, my knee, and my tibia. That's a long story. Because of that, I limp. I got a motto. I limp so you can walk. That's my motto. Um, and a few months ago, I had just came from a crusade. I'm in the hotel. And my, my leg was bothering me, and I felt frustrated. And I got, I got in bed, and, and I admit, I got frustrated, and I told the Lord, man, and, you know, this leg, come on, you healed me from cancer, and can't you just fix this already? Let me tell you something. I went online, and here comes Carlos Lara playing the piano. Wow. That's and good. the Spirit of the Lord said to me, are you going to keep complaining? Are you going to keep complaining? And and we thank you for coming on our show. Thank you. Thank you. For now, you're me. from Guatemala, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Guatemala is one of my all-time favorite places to go preach. And I want you to tell the audience how, how you were born and your condition. So basically, when my mom was three months pregnant, she had a dream where a voice told her, hey, the, the baby you have inside is going to come with problems. Mm -hmm. uh, that for the world, they're going to be catastrophic. But for you and your family, they're going to be a blessing. Oh, my God. So, so my mom knew already when I was born that I was going to be born with problems, you know. So then when I was born, the doctor comes to my mom and he's like, hey, look, your son has a lot of problems. He cannot breathe by himself. Uh, he cannot eat. He will not be able to speak because he was born with a cleft palate. Um, he doesn't have hands. He doesn't have an arm. A lot of problems. And um, he gave the option to my mom to unplug the machine that kept me alive. 
um, because he was so nice, you know. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, then my mom tells me that what she felt in her heart to tell him is, "You're not the one that gave him life, so who gives you the right to take Mother, his life?" Mother, I told you, Mama. Mama, I told you, Mama. Don't you give up on your child. So I'm sure that I'm here because of those words and because wow. God so had a plan. So you, 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 God, you know, brings you past that. You're breathing on your own. You're growing up, and you're in United. Now you're in the United States, right? Um, and you become homeless for a night. For it a was night. for a night. It so, was the night right before with my mom. We had decided to go back to Guatemala because I, the plans didn't work out. I want you to tell everybody at home because somebody watching right now is in the middle of losing their home. And is worried. I know what it is to be homeless. Believe it or not, I was homeless once too. I also did not know where I was going to sleep. And this testimony shook me and my wife. I want you to talk about that night here in Florida. Yeah, so basically uh, our visa had expired. So we had to go back. Um, so with my mom, we decided to go back because none of the plans worked out. So then uh, we were sitting at a bus stop at night in front of a 7-Eleven. And uh, my mom was praying to God. I was sleeping on her lap. And she was like, God, I cannot believe that you brought us here for nothing. Just to go back empty-handed. Wow. Um, so she, was, she told God, if you want us here to stay tomorrow before noon, I want a husband. I want someone that comes to me and asks for marriage. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're in a bus stop. <laughs> you got 24 hours to stay in the country. And your mama said, if you brought us here... Your mother's here today? Yeah, my mama. Where's your mama? Mama, where you at? <laughs> Somebody give God glory for this woman's faith. You are an inspiration, mama. God bless you. Lord, if you want us here, what'd she say? If you want us here, br bring me a husband before noon tomorrow. So then the next day in the morning, she walks into 7-Eleven and there, there was my stepdad. Okay, do you know how long I pray for a wife? <laughs> <laughs> I prayed a long time for a wife and your mama in 24 hours. Well, it was a process of many years. Yeah, I it understand. Was, no, yeah, we, just... we get that point. No, we, <laughs> let's not talk about the process. Let's just talk about how your mother said, and if you want me here, I'm going to get married by the... And the next day, God puts this amazing man. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. God still got princes out there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> So your mom gets married, God situates you guys in America, right. and now you want to worship. Well, I wanted to worship ever since I was five, uh, ever since I was in Guatemala. Um, my mom used to talk to me about this amazing God who was so loving, faithful, uh, caring, healer. And all, all I could see was a God who was just unfair and wow. one, the one who messed up when he created me, you know? Wow. That's all I could see. So then I used to talk to God, and I was like, God, I really want to know you for who you are. So allow me to live my life serving you through music. That's what wow. I want to do. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you wanted to worship, you, but you wanted your particular worship was music. Right. So how did you start playing music? So I started praying uh, to God when I was five. God, I want to serve you through music. I want to play drums, you know? You uh, wanted to be a drummer. Yes. And um, so I prayed every day, every day. And I turned nine and still no answer from God. And you know what I always say is, if I prayed from five years old to nine years old, that's four years, that's almost half of my life when I was nine wow. that I prayed for. And then when I was nine, still no answer from God. So I was like, God, you are really unfair. I want to serve you, and yet I can't. And I see a lot of people, I'm not looking at anyone here, or... <laughs> But they don't do anything for you. You, Your frustration with God is, hey, I want to serve you. I want to live for you. I, I want to. I want to worship. Yes. And you felt because of your physical challenge that you couldn't. Right. The mirror was my worst enemy. It was the one that used to tell me, hey, you can't. Wow. And I used to believe it. I can't. Wow. But something happens. You, you ask your mom for a piano, right? Yeah, that was when I was 13. I, I was physically tired of living with no hands. Like, physically. I, I didn't want to do it anymore. So then I, I read on the Bible something that said, go into your room, close the door, 
and worship. Uh oh. Say that again. So then I go into your room, close the door, and worship. Go to your room, stop running to the psychologist, stop running to the therapist. The miracle is in your bedroom. Close that door, speak to God, get on your knees, and until He does not respond with some fire, don't you get off that floor. So I didn't want to worship with drums because they were too loud. I didn't have drums. So then I was like, I want to play the piano. I want to be able to play it because I don't want to have the need to have someone next to me playing. Mm. I want to be by myself. Wow. So that's why I asked God for the gift to be able to play the piano. And you said, Mom, I want a piano. That same day, she bought me a keyboard. She goes and buys you a keyboard. And then I tried to play each key with my finger. You guys are not paying attention. This boy said, Mommy, I want a piano. She doesn't say no. You missed it. Mother, keep believing in your child. Keep believing in your child. Don't you give up. She goes. She buys the piano. She puts it in front of you. And I play it with my finger, and it didn't sound good. I was wow. like, how can I worship God with one finger? So then I put it under my bed, and I just started crying. I was like, sorry, God, for asking you for the impossible, you know? So then two weeks later, I was in school, and I, I felt how God spoke to me, and he was like, use your feet. Wait, you had never heard the voice of God? I had felt God. You I had felt God? Yes. Now you're at school. I, I was in school, and it was kind of like a whisper, mm. you know? So it was like a feeling that I had, but it was like, I cannot say I heard God, but I felt a voice. And he you. said? Use your feet. Use your feet. So then I got home, and instead of putting the uh, keyboard on, on the table, I put it on the floor, and I looked up some chords, and I told God, God, I don't do this to impress people. I do this because I need to renew my strength. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Somebody's at home right now watching and they feel I can't worship. I can't sing. There is nothing impossible for those that believe in God. No hay nada imposible para Dios. There is nothing impossible for God. Amen. So then that day um, when I noticed I had been playing a song for two hours. And it was the first time I cried, not because I was sad, but because I was happy. Wow. And I felt my strength come back. Come on, somebody, give God the glory. <laughs> give him the glory. Now, I've been watching you in this last season. You've been traveling. Yeah, I have been traveling. More you've been going to Guatemala. You've been going all over the, the state. And, right. and uh, you've been tes testifying and you've been Correct. singing. You've had the honor of meeting really great worshipers. Um, like uh, Miel San Marcos, Ingrid Rosario, uh, Juan de Montreal, um, a lot, a lot of people. So God has placed you in that stage where the mirror used to say, "You're never gonna get there." Well, now the mirror is my best tool because honestly, when I look at it, is what allows me to say, "Wow, it's not because of me," right? You know, <laughs> the mirror is what shows me that it's because of God. The mirror is my best tool. It tells me it is not because of me. It is because Amen. of him. Carlos, you cannot leave this stage tonight without worshiping. And I ask you to come on this interview and you cannot leave us tonight and you cannot leave the viewers at home without worshiping. What are you going to sing for us tonight? Uh, basically, what I always tell, tell God, I give you my heart. And I want to live for you. This is Carlos Lada. I give you my heart. Give it up, everybody. If you can close your eyes, even if you want to see me play the piano with my feet, please close your eyes. I don't want to impress you. I don't want to show off. And if you know this song, why don't you sing with me? Hallelujah. This this is my can i do that again this is my desire to honor you lord with all my heart i worship you Within me, I give you praise. All that I adore is in you. 
why don't you lift up your voice and sing with me Lord I give you my heart I give you my soul I live for you alone every breath that I take every moment I'm awake Lord have your way in me yo te rindo mi ser te doy mi corazón yo vivo para ti en cada palpita mientras haya aliento en mí Dios haz tu obra en mí why don't you give it up for God? You know, it doesn't matter what people say about you. It doesn't matter what even your family says about you. And the best thing, it doesn't even matter what you think of yourself. Because you can lie to yourself. The best thing is, the only thing that matters is what God thinks of you. Amen. ¿Cuántos hablan español? Levanten tus manos en ese momento. Yo levanto mis manos Aunque no tenga fuerzas oh, oh, oh. Yo levanto mis manos Aunque tenga mil problemas ¿Y qué pasa? Cuando levanto mis manos, comienzo a sentir una unción que me hace cantar. Cuando levanto mis manos, comienzo a sentir el fuego. Cuando levanto mis manos, mis cargas se van. Nuevas fuerzas tú me das. Todo eso es posible, todo eso es posible. Cuando levanto mis manos, oh. Todo eso es posible, todo eso es posible. Cuando levanto mis manos, Carlos Lara, everybody! Thank you for coming to our show. We bless you and we love you in Jesus' name.